the first thing you have to do is have a big idea. And I spent 10 years thinking about the home computer market and the home computer software market specifically. And it took me nine and a half years to think of the big idea. And the big idea is the software artist. Actually, that's one of the appeals of electronic arts is I get to separate myself. I mean, I can all of a sudden have this pure existence where I write software at home and I write it for me and electronic arts sort of looks at it and says, oh, this is pretty good. We're going to sell it. And they go off and sell it and they send me money. I want to have the company known as being the best marketing company in the business. Um, and I'd like to be ranked and compared with uh, the great consumer marketing companies of all times. And I think we can do that over a number of years if we work at it because we know how important it is to do good marketing. We know how important it is to support our retailers in, in, a, in a way that will um, make us successful. When we talk about software as an art form, what we really mean by that is our software is deep. It gives a big experience. There's a lot to it. There's a lot going on. It's very, very creative. All of the things associated with the word art it seems a little pretentious to me sometimes to, if I think of myself as a software artist. I mean, you really have to prove it. And I think I've been better than most. I mean, I don't, when I do something, I don't crank out 500 copies just for the money. Um, I think being a software artist means trying to push the medium. So I think that uh, software is an art form, and, and it's becoming more and more artful all the time. And you're, we're starting to see the kind of people that are really good at doing great software, behave more and more like artists are traditionally expected to behave. Parents want products that have educational value, but products that, that their children are going to want to use. Uh, kids that are interested in computing, they want products that are fantastically entertaining and exciting and compelling. And that's, that's really the, the major part of the market. You really can't make a distinction between entertainment and education. And in fact, that's what's fun, is because you can't. And um, that's what's going to make people really use the computer in the home because you can't make that distinction. They're wound up with one another. That's the way it should be. It's the old lion cub. Anybody talked about the lion cubs yet? And you think about the way lion cubs play, it's a very, very serious activity, and that's how they learn. And the computer really is, is a, a profound new way to play. Everybody has dreams. And dreams are a way that your brain allows you to act out your fantasies in a way that's acceptable to you. And what's neat about the computer is that it allows you to manufacture dreams and, and act them out in a much more conscious, deliberate way. That's what fantasy is. It's a world under control. And that's why people like to fantasize, because it's, you know, we want to control everything. The biggest shock is when you realize that the world isn't under your control. I guess that's when you're like two days old or something. And everyone wants to control. That's why I program. And I think that's why people will buy programs in the, you know, in the future to allow them to control something. I think it's absolutely possible that someday with computers, you're going to have experiences that are as vivid as your dreams right now. I think we bring a lot of strong ideas to the retail community. I think we're going to have ideas about how software should be merchandised that will affect their ability to sell computer hardware. Vice versa, or, or on the other hand, I think the retailer understands retailing a lot better than we do, and, and we're going to listen very carefully to what his needs are. There's a lot of money to be made by selling millions and millions of computers. It's not just software, it's software and hardware and peripherals and accessories, and it's a gigantic industry. And the software, really, from a retailer's point of view, is the sizzle that's going to sell the steak. It's possible for a computer to provide a world where the rules are open-ended, where if you're flying around a planet and you decide to take off toward that star, you can. We can evoke in people a sense of, um, uh, you know, wonder, curiosity, intrigue. Um, uh, maybe a little smile for, for, a, for a grandson who learned how to do something uh, on a, on a grandfather's machine. But I'd like to write some software that interacts with you in a way that's really close to the way a person would interact with you. Uh, you may become attached to some of the software characters and you may um, develop emotional feelings about, about some of the personalities in the software. That's why I've been mentioning the idea of a software friend. 
And that sort of should be built into a computer, but uh, it can be built into a program, too. We've recognized from day one that there's going to be there's going to be a lot of people trying to sell home computer software because it's going to be a very big market. And for us to be successful, the retailer has to feel part of our family, has to be, be uh, an extension of um, what we're trying to do as a company. It has to feel close to us. So we're going to work very hard at satisfying uh, what the retailer needs and giving him what he wants and. Um, making him feel like he's important to us, because he is. Without the retailer, we're dead. Our whole program revolves around retail. Everything we do focuses down through retail. And five years from now, for us to be successful, we're going to have to have made a lot of retailers successful in marketing this kind of uh, product. In order for us to do what we uh, are trying to do, we have to be obsessed, and we have to be a little bit arrogant, and we have to be a little bit cocky about uh, having a sense of possibilities that, that are open to us that aren't open to others because of our convictions. And if we didn't feel that way, and if we didn't even have a little bit of a sense of uh, not knowing what we don't know, and uh, you know, if we, if we were too conscious of the pitfalls, if we were too conscious of the obstacles, we might uh, lose our uh, conviction. And uh, we really do have the sense of of really being obsessed with it and really believing that we know how to do it better than everybody else. And if and that may seem arrogant, but if we didn't feel that way, we wouldn't be able to pull it off. And it's because we feel that way that we're going to.